Welcome grade 10 math students to our first video tutorial. Today's lesson is on an investigation of transformations of parabolas. So today we are going to learn how parabolas move around the coordinate grid. How they move left, right, up, down, and even how they can be reflected in the x-axis, meaning that they are flipped upside down. So today we're going to learn how all of that occurs. For this lesson what you will need is the investigation handout that we went through in class. It looks like this. It has three, three parts to the investigation. Um, here's the first part. Investigation 1, comparing y equals x squared to y equals x squared plus k. Investigation 2, comparing y equals x squared to y equals x minus h squared. And investigation 3, comparing graphs of y equals x squared and y equals ax squared. Also what you'll need is this placemat here. I'll try and zoom out so you can see it better. You will need this placemat where we will collect all of our ideas into one single area and it'll be a nice reference for you when we're working with quadratics in vertex form. Okay, so make sure you have that with you while you're following along with this lesson. Hopefully you can use this tutorial um, as an aid for you if you just need some clarification of concepts that we did in class or if you missed the class hopefully you can use this to um, follow along and fill out the investigation. So. Up until now in the unit, when we've looked at quadratics, they have been in standard form. So standard form is this right here. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Up until now, all the quadratics we've seen have been in that form. In order to graph a quadratic in, fa in that form, we had to make a table of values and then plot all the points and then draw the parabola and it, it took quite a bit of time. Today we're going to learn about quadratics in this form in y equals a x minus h squared plus k. What we're going to do is spend some time figuring out what the values of a, h, and k mean. Okay, what do they stand for? When we change these values how is the problem going to be affected? We know in an equation, so our equation is, you know, our equation is y equals a x minus h squared. Excuse the writing, I know it's not the greatest. So our equation is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Okay? We know that x and y stand for the coordinates of all the points on the parabola. Okay? That's what x and y always stand for in, for the equation of any function. They stand for the coordinates of the points of that function. What we're going to look at now is figuring out what a, h, and k stand for. And once we've figured that out, we'll understand why it's useful to represent a quadratic in this form. Okay? Why is it useful to represent a quadratic in vertex form opposed to standard form? So we'll try and figure that all, that all out through this investigation. So, before we start the investigation, it would be useful just to do a quick review of what we know about parabolas so far. So, the most basic quadratic function is y equals x squared. This is the graph of y equals x squared. It's a rough graph, it's not the exact graph, but what's important to note here is two things. The first, that the vertex of the parabola is right here. And we learned that the vertex of a parabola is the maximum or minimum point of the parabola. In this case, the vertex is the minimum point because the parabola opens up. As, as we increase x values, the, the y values are going to decrease until it gets to that vertex. Then as we continue to increase the x values, the y values to the right of the vertex will then start to increase. Okay? So this parabola will never go below this point right here. That is the minimum value. So in this case the vertex is a minimum value. The vertex of this parabola, because it's at the origin, 
is 0, 0. Now, let's remember what the axis of symmetry is. The axis of symmetry, if we remember back to our definition, is a vertical line. Oh, sorry, that's not completely straight, but it's a vertical line that passes through the vertex of a parabola. Okay, And the axis of symmetry um, is like a mirror for this parabola. It's symmetrical on either side. Okay, So this side of the parabola is symmetrical to this side. And the axis of symmetry you can think of as the mirror. Now the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Why that is, is because for this vertical line, the x values of all the coordinates on that line are going to be 0. This line doesn't move left or right at all. It's completely vertical. Okay? So every x value on that line is x equals 0. Therefore, the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. A nice little trick in order to determine your axis of symmetry, just look at the x coordinate of your vertex, and that will be your axis of symmetry. Good. Now let's move on to the first part of our investigation. So right now, make sure you have your investigation out and you are looking at investigation 1. Compare the graphs of y equals x squared and y equals x squared plus k. So for this part of the investigation, we don't want to be considering, if we look back to our, our vertex form of parabola, it's right here, y equals ax minus h squared plus k. We only want to, we want to figure out what k does. So we don't want to consider h or a at this point. So what we are going to do in order to, to make that happen, let me just rewrite our equation here. So equation of a parabola is y equals a x minus h squared plus k. We only want to figure out what varying the value of k does to the parabola. In order to do that, we are going to set a to equal 1. That way we're just multiplying the parabola by 1. And set h to equal 0. That way we're not taking anything away from the x. If we simplify this equation, you will notice that we just get x squared plus k. So now when we vary the values of k, we'll be able to determine how that affects the parabola. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you have a graphing calculator, get that out now. If you don't, it would be useful for you to download one. Here's an example of uh, an, a graphing calculator emulator that you can get online from texasinstruments.com. It's, it's fast and easy to download, and it'll make your work at home a lot easier. So, remember when you have your graphing calculator, your first step is to clear all the memory on there. So you're going to go second, plus, seven, one, two. And that'll become very habitual for you as, uh, as you use it more. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at how the graph of y equals x squared plus 3 compares to the graph of y equals x squared. I have the graph of y equals x squared on the, graph, on the, on the grid here, uh, and it's drawn in black. So now let's look at how y equals x squared plus 3 relates to that. In order to do that, we're going to go into our calculator and input into the y1, so the first function, we're going to input x squared. Just so we have our graph of y equals x squared on there. Let's take a look. Yep, there it is. Now let's scroll down to our second function and input x squared plus 3. And let's see how that compares. Oh, and you'll notice that the parabola has moved up 1, 2, 3 units. So on your investigation, you are going to want to roughly sketch that parabola, and it should look something like this. So it's going to move up 1, 2, 3. Let's try and make this uh, a little more exciting with how these parabolas move. Let's put some sound effects in here. Okay, so we have... Oh, I moved my grid by accident. Okay, so we have y equals x squared, and then if we have y equals x squared plus 3, it's going to move up 1, two, three units on the y-axis. Awesome. So, we can kind of understand why that happened. 
it didn't just move arbitrarily up three units. If we look at our equation, we have x squared plus three. So after we've done that one function, we've graphed it, we might want to try and make an inference that maybe altering this k value moves the parabola up. So if they, that k value is 3, it moved up 3. So now we might want to think if our k value is 5, we kind of infer that maybe the parabola will move up 5. If we use our graphing calculator to verify that, go into our, oh, turn it back on. We input a third function, y equals x squared plus 5. If we graph that, we will notice that the parabola has now moved up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. Awesome. So if we put this uh, parabola on our graph here, it will look like this. It'll move up 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. And there's the graph of that parabola. So make sure you have that sketched on your investigation. Now next, if on our graphing calculator we input x squared minus 2, what do you think will happen? When we had a positive k value, it moved up. So you might think that when we have a negative k value, the problem might move down. Let's take a look if that happens. If we brought up our graphing calculator here, let's clear our second function, and let's put in x squared minus 2. We graph that. You'll notice, yes, indeed, the problem did move down too. So instead of those jumping sound effects for going up, let's use the sewer sound effects for going down. So that makes sense to me. So it goes down 1, 2. Good. So there's the parabola there. And if we did the same thing for x squared minus 4, put it in our graphing calculator, we would determine that this parabola goes down 1, 2, 3, 4. Good. So these are all the problems you should have sketched on your investigation. After you have those sketched, what you also need to fill out, I'll bring it up here to show you and I'll zoom in. What you also need to fill out is what the vertex of each of these problems are, the axis of symmetry, direction of opening, maximum or minimum value, and the relation to y equals x squared. For the first example here, I'll take you through and explain to you how you did it. You'll be responsible for filling out the rest on your own. The answers are posted on first class, so you can go through and check and make sure you're doing it properly. Okay, so for y equals x squared plus 3, the problem moved up 1, 2, 3 units. So the vertex, the y value of the vertex has increased by 3. The problem hasn't moved left or right on the x-axis at all, so the x-coordinate of the vertex has stayed at 0. So our vertex, that point right there, is 0, 3. Our axis of symmetry, the vertical line that passes through the vertex, is x equals 0. Look at the, x, look at the value of the x-coordinate of your vertex, and that is your axis of symmetry. The parabola opens up, Therefore, it has a minimum value. This parabola will never go below that vertex. Okay? It will continue upwards forever, but it will never go below that point. And the minimum value, if we look at the y value of our vertex, the minimum value is y equals 3. Compared to y equals x squared, this parabola is up 3. The vertex has shifted up 3. Good. Okay. So, Remember, as we're going along through the lesson here, keep, keep filling in this, pause the video, and make sure you're able to fill out this information, and check the posted answers and make sure you're getting it right. So you always want to be filling in all of these cells for, for the rest of the investigation. So I'll minimize that. 